Welcome one and all to Umami Manga. I'm Petter and this is James. Hello! And today we're talking about Volume 3 of Free Run Beyond Journey's End. I'd say another good volume in the series so far. I'd say the best volume in the series so far. Even even the best. I mean, mm, I, I, didn't, I hadn't really thought of it in that way yet, but it definitely might be. I think for me, one of the things, without getting into too in-depth already, but sure. one of the things I really, really liked this volume for was... Well, the, the several flashbacks that we got, because they, well, I mean, we've gotten flashbacks throughout the series, like, already, but I think the flashbacks in this book, or a lot of them anyway, really gave us, like, understandings to, like, some, in, some, some important beginnings that we didn't mm -hmm. really know exactly before. Um, well, like, stuff with Flamme, stuff with, well, the party, like, the, the hero party back then, and also yeah. uh, Stark. Like, getting those types of flashbacks, I thought, was, was really, really neat in this volume. Up until this point, we've really only seen... Well, I can't even say Fern. We've seen all of her backstory. For, I mean, because mm -hmm. we haven't seen what exactly her family life was like before the, all that happened. True. But I can't... To be honest, I don't know if that's ever going to be touched on, because I don't know if it needs to be. Like, I don't know how yeah. relevant that's that's going to be. But the other the other people... Those were backstories that I was personally cur curious about and wanted to wanted to see more of, and mm. I think it was, yeah, a lot of great exposition and, and um, detail that was g given to us. For sure, for sure, I definitely agree, and and yeah, about about Fern, like yeah, she she was very young when when that all happened for her. I you know she started living with hi right. um, with Heiter from a very young age, so. So yeah, there wouldn't be too much there. Although if there is, then of course I would love to see that too at some point. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you say best volume so far. I yeah, I can probably get behind that. It was definitely an entertaining volume. First one was great and emotional. Um, you know, a great start to the series. And second, you know, kept going with adding Stark and just mm. um, increasing the bonds that these party members had. But this one. Um, it added a lot of character development in a, it, through through the back or the flashbacks, and it just gave me a greater appreciation for uh, the characters here. Yeah, and so a, a, a top of all the the comedy moments and and well not <laughs> yeah. just the comedy moments. The comedy moments were great uh -huh. and been pretty consistent uh, throughout these volumes, but also a lot of the powerful like kind of one liners uh, that that were in that I felt that were in this book. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I'm sure were in the other ones, but f when reading this this volume, they stuck out to me more, and I had moments where I was just kind of cheering them on, or mm. just like, just wow, aud aud you know, audible wow. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, no, I, totally. I, I think at the very least, like, I'm not 100% sure if I would consider this my favorite volume or the best volume out of these three. Uh, although I, I, I can definitely say I think it's been a very consistently good like the the series mm. i think like uh i have i think i have a bit of a hard time ranking them in any way the first three like i think they're all that's fair very equal in my mind but like very very solid but anyway let's start by talking about free Ren. as i mentioned about the backstory stuff we got like more stuff about her and like how she well m almost like like her origin story obviously there may or there probably is more before that that could be interesting to find out but at the very least kind of her reason for why she despises demons so much um was mm -hmm. an interesting thing to learn and and also how she met flame uh was really just something i really in, enjoyed to well to find out absolutely you know that was not something that i expected to be the case i i mean i guess i i to be honest i thought that F uh, flame would have found Frieden by herself but i did not expect her to found her in a village that had just been massacred kind of th right. that whole situation yeah i did not expect and that was that was very heavy mm -hmm. um but it also makes sense why frieden has that hate um for the demons and, yeah uh, along with all the life experiences that she's had yeah and the, the uh, demon king specifically like because apparently you're right it was she has beef with him supposedly the same demon king who who you know made that order to to kill all those elves all all the like it was a little bit like vaguely put if he meant like those specific elves in that village if his mm -hmm. order was to kill all of them or or if his order was to kill just every elf in the world um was a bit unclear i thought um, yeah 
I wouldn't be surprised if it was every elf in the world because right. Friden later on kind of acts like she had expected elves to be completely extinct. Um, yeah. At least it, it, in in some regard. So, yeah, I, I think at the very least she had expected the worst hmm. and that she was by herself in terms of, uh, you know, her people. Yeah, that, that was also interesting to find out. But continue on with the her backstory with Flamma. Hmm? She learned how to control her mana and how she uses it to deceive demons. And I, I really hmm. thought that was a, a cool moment, just yeah, uh, that reveal of how, how powerful Flamma and Fiden were um, in, in, in both instances. Uh-huh. It's, uh, you know, they mentioned, and I think even Fern mentioned that it's a cowardly act. Like, you know, it's not something that is worthy of the magic, I guess they hold, but they use it anyway. They do that anyway. Yeah. And I, I mean, it's, you know, I get the logic and I also understand it's supposed to be kind of uh, poetic or if, uh, fantastical in a way. Mm. But I think it's like, why not? Like, Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's totally fair game. I mean, if the, if the demons are, you know, stupid enough and, you know, uh, almost <laughs> Pitiful, pitiful in the way that they refuse to you know, hide their true powers like that, then then why not deceive them in that way? Totally. Yeah, yeah. Also on that, I thought it was interesting how the first time in the flashback when when Freerun did that, uh, when she reduced her, well, her, her detectable mana like that, mm-hmm. she said that any elf could do something this simple. And that got me thinking, well, it, basically it made me... It gave me two different ideas, two potential possibilities. Uh, either all elves in this world are just naturally skilled with magic. Not necessarily like that they just know magic in, like without practicing, but if they do try to practice at all, they have a really, really easy time learning. Like Either that is the thing that we are supposed to take from that, or that her her specific village was just like, I guess... A village where all the elves were well, they, they, everyone practiced magic, kind of. Um, so I guess like, I'm not entirely sure which one of those two is more more likely. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure either. It could be a situation where supp- suppressing your mana aura, if if you will, um, like that is just mm. a simple thing that more, I guess, uh, lack of a better word, advanced creatures can do. Um, I mean, I don't think you probably can. It's probably not right to call. Elves creatures, but I mean, if you, I guess humans could be considered creatures as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> so, let's all let's call them all creatures. <laughs> yeah, um, but the the demons can do it as well. Um, for you know, for a time, like they can suppress their aura. They just choose not to in most cases, unless they're trying to sneak up on somebody. Right. Um, yeah. So I guess in a way, uh, because maybe they are a little more magically advanced or wise that suppressing your mana just kind of comes more naturally mm. but obviously what Fiden has to learn that Thama helps her um, master is suppressing it constantly at all times yeah <laughs> yeah that that is intense right I wonder like I guess at, like eventually after just getting so good at it I, I, I assume they they are even even able to do it in their sleep I would assume that's yeah. Mm. That must be the just their norm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Although it would be funny if you know you, uh, she just suddenly falls asleep and then, poof, <laughs> like, <laughs> all her right. all her magical. True. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're so bright. I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. With that in mind, yeah, Freerun and probably Fern as well can probably both do it in their sleep. Mm. I mean, definitely Freerun, but I, I think Fern as well. She's, I think she's oh, yeah. skilled enough for, Absolutely. for that at this point. She's a third-class mage, after all, which I guess is, oh, yeah. is good. Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, and Freerun mm. is nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> they, keep, they keep changing it every 50 years. Like, oh my gosh, come on. It's so frequently. Be, be consistent. <laughs> <laughs> she had some ancient amulet to prove her like <laughs> level <laughs> that was so funny oh but so 
uh, just going back to them taking advantage of the demons, you know, taking advantage of, of their hubris, if you will, the hubris yeah. of your enemies. I, I think that's a smart tactic. Absolutely. Um, and then the thought comes up that no one has enemies. No one has enemies. It's like, <laughs> not now, Thors. Not now. <laughs> Different universe. <laughs> yeah. Although it would be fun to see them crossed. <laughs> yeah. You know, the idea that we talked about... Was it in the first or second? I think it was the first volume, wasn't it? Of Vinland Saga. Oh, no. No, no. Or, sorry. I'm. I'm or, fe- uh, feed in. Oh. Um, actually, maybe it was the second volume where we're introduced to the demons. And it was the first volume. We weren't sure if like they if they could be considered good or you know, like could could they be reasoned with or talked to? Right. Right. And, that, that was that was the second volume. That was the second volume we talked about, mm. but eventually we, we were like, "No, that's that's not the case." Like, yeah, they're clearly there to deceive, and and I and I do like the path that they're going with, in, because I do think there's a lot of um, stories nowadays that do touch on the, oh, they're just misunderstood, or there's a, there's a way around it. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't know. I guess it's the co- oh, I'm so compassionate, the compassionate side in me. <laughs> 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 and and humble too. Yeah, gosh, uh, I'm so humble. I, I, I'm so <laughs> humbly compassionate. Um, it, it's just kind of like, well, I mean, what if, what if there was a way for, you know, to offer a a truce or a peace pact with these quote unquote monsters? But mm. you know, not everything works. At, like like a wood in in real life, you know. Yeah. It, like Thor Thor's mentality is is just not going to work in a, in a fantasy world where there are little monsters who prey on humans, you know. Indeed, yes. Uh... So anyway, that was a, that was a <laughs> thought that I had, and it's I guess because I have, I have been reading Vinland and and Yukimura's work, so it's just been on my mind lately. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, but I I liked like last time when we talked about it because I went into the, that previous discussion totally kind of almost wanting there to be more to it like wanting there to be like less of a black and white thing with the with the demons but then as we talked about you you kind of convinced me that it's actually kind of a cool thing that they are this just pure Mm -hmm. evil like totally non-human kind of thing because as you yeah yeah it's kind of it kind of has become more normal for things to well to not be that way which is yeah, so, so it makes it cool. Okay, well, kind of unexpected that they, like that that the demons in, in the free run universe, really like you really just kind of go back to the roots of what demons originally were in like old right. mythology and folklore. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. And you know, and they don't understand how humans, elves, and you know the the other species. I guess work, you know what I mean? Like they don't understand like the, the emotions that they feel and everything like that. So it just kind of brings an extra layer to uh, these monsters that are purely there to feed on uh, humans. Yeah. So we mentioned the revealing Fiden's mana power, I guess. I, you know, I, it's over 9,000. Yeah. I, I have to make that joke, but, uh, but also just, the the lines where she says the the maid standing before you has lived over a thousand years, mm-hmm. whoa! Like just <laughs> not only the the words she says, but just the 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 image that's there. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh gosh, <laughs> so, so powerful. Impactful. Yeah, right. And you know, it's it's really cool how, well, the the two makers of this this manga, they're portraying this this incredibly powerful character who is. Who is powerful from the very beginning of where the story starts, mm-hmm. and you know, more powerful than at least so far any of her foes that she's faced, and it's always pretty obvious that she is. Like, I at least yeah. I I never felt like she was in any kind of danger when she was encountering Aura in this volume, and you know, it, 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 mm-hmm. I'm never really scared for her life or anything, but it's still entertaining. Like even yeah, even with the character written the way she is, um, they still manage to make it, yeah, just fun and uh, engaging to to read. So yeah, I, I think that's really well done because I think characters like this are hard to make 
or, or hard to portray in a, in a in a way that makes it entertaining. Um, I I do I think, agree. I, th- yeah. I think a lot of people struggle making characters like this well, mm-hmm. but I think these these people really nail it. I mean, there's that whole like kind of Mary Sue or mm-hmm. um, you know just characters who are too OP that you know other than being kind of jokes, which you know I love One Punch Man, um, yeah. but in some <laughs> cases his his whole thing is kind of a, a joking um, situation. Yeah. But uh, to be able to write a character that is you know taking themselves so seriously, but also um, is basically the most powerful thing, uh, as at least so far. Right. Um, yeah, that's that's tough, and, and and making it making it interesting. You know, I think what helps with that is the enemy that they're facing, and with the demons, it seems uh, with with all three of these demons that we've ha- we had in this volume, they over or underestimated. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess you could say they overestimated themselves, but they more 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 likely they underestimated their opponents yeah. and were so caught up in their hubris that it made the reveal uh, or their downfall all the more epic, I guess you could say. Yeah, right, right, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, getting to see how Freer enjoyed Himmel's party was was also really nice. It's, yeah. It wasn't really something I had expected that we would necessarily see since the flashbacks that we had gotten to their time together had was already kind of past that point. But the fact that they went all the way back there in this uh in this volume well, was really sweet and uh, uh well or well there's one thing I'll save for later about that but yeah okay. I I really like that part I did too and kind of her mentality change like that Yeah right right Yeah cuz she had been just kind of living in the wilderness for like 500 years or more at that point yeah. I think was the implication so in a way, they kind of saved her, like, well, kind of brought mm. her back into more, more, more of a life, Out I of guess. Seclusion. Kind of, mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Helped her, I guess, maybe conquer a bit of her fears, maybe? Yeah, I, I, I believe so. And, and yeah, well, in general, since she is starting to, well, since this series is so much about her kind of realizing how precious those 10 years were. They they definitely brought you know gave her a new angle kind of on on life and friendship and all that. Right. You're speaking on that. Like she originally trained for revenge. Like that was kind of the motivation that Fama gave to her um, with um, training her to be, become a mage. But then eventually she kind of I guess the overwhelming idea of fighting the demon king just i guess took it out of her or you know mm. made just made her falter um but i guess himmel was able to get help her get revenge again or, oh yeah that's right <laughs> I don't know. yeah but, they brought her I mean, back on track kind of yeah they brought her back on track you know mm. it, revenge is an interesting thing like in some media it's portrayed as <laughs> terrible like don't let it control you and but in other media it's like you know, there's a good kind of, there's like a good kind of revenge. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, you, t- you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> totally. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> like a righteous revenge. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. And I think there are probably some fictional works that kind of have both messages or, well, well, message, oh, well, yeah. quote unquote mm. messages. Like there, there are uh-huh. characters that do it and it's portrayed in, in a positive way. And there's other characters that were portrayed in a negative way. Um, mm. You could probably argue avatar maybe has that maybe maybe and maybe full metal alchemist was also actually something mm. that just came to mind for me with like scars whole journeys about not yeah. like well being able to forgive the people who wronged him meanwhile mm-hmm. well well i guess i shouldn't talk too much about the ending of yeah it, good but, point <laughs> but anyway <laughs> um it's a really old manga and anime at this point very true and very it's true. It's I, I guess it's I would also dare say it's a classic that most people that listen have probably consumed somehow whether it's the manga or the anime. Anyway, um, yeah, revenge is an interesting topic. Yeah, but I, I think it's less so the revenge. I mean, I, I think that kind of um, helped her accept Himmel's like party request. Mm. But I it obviously became more of a accepting a hand that reached out to them you know a, a kind of a friendship type of thing even though even if she didn't realize it at the time 
yeah, true. Plus, I guess revenge is easier to justify when it also means saving the world. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know? Uh, definitely. I guess that's fair. <laughs> so, she really likes that uh, clothes-removing potion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, she's like, my master taught me all about, like, you know, that men really love this potion. Like, yeah. <laughs> It'll make him happy. Trust me. <laughs> she's hey, hey, with the po- <laughs> I don't, she, she's like most she's like excited to see it be used or something like that. right her, I guess. <laughs> but it's also funny that both well already both Freerin and fern can use magic to look through people's clothes anyway that's that's what i'm saying like there there's another that another thing with that spell of looking through <laughs> people's clothes like you know i wonder if Flamma told her about that spell as well like maybe if, Ooh. <laughs> i don't know maybe Flamma is just kind of you know a perv in the word yes in the words of fern a perv <laughs> you're all pervs yeah 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 i'm 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 sure we'll get to know flame even more i or i'm i'm quite sure like i'm sure there yeah. there will be more flashbacks I still have questions. To, to that yeah right mm-hmm. so definitely looking forward to getting getting to know her even more and then lastly i i love the um the line that she i guess learned from Himmel is I'm talking about the present. Yeah. And I'm sure we'll learn more about that concept in the next volume because I feel that's mm. what it's leading to. But I I really like that lesson. Yeah. And I'm I'm a sucker for, you know, redemption arcs and uh, stories about, you know, making mistake but but changing, repenting. And mm. I, I don't even have to see the mistake, but it's the repenting part, like the becoming a new person. I, I love stories about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I find it so relatable. <laughs> I'm totally with you. Um, it, but actually, I, I also really lo- loved that that quote. And like, well, it was it was Himmel, yeah. Himmel said it to her, and then she used it to and well, when she talked to Sign at the end of the of this book, which, well, it it showed it, that that was kind of well made it well for me at least that that was when I understood kind of on what level she saw herself in him. Um, mm-hmm. At least one of the reasons why she thought that the two of them were similar. Yeah. But there was an earlier instance, too, uh, where there was like a bit of a similar topic. After Stark told Fern about his past, uh, well, that, that he felt some kind of shame over his past, kind of. Um, she responded by saying, the past doesn't matter. And I think that's mm-hmm. kind of a similar... It's, it's, it, it's not the exact same thing, but I think it's it kind of goes hand in hand kind of nicely with I'm talking about the present, where yeah. they're both... Well, yeah, they're, they're both uh, advocating for, you know, to live in the present. And I think that's a definitely a good mindset to have. I feel like an, a, an undertone to that is kind of forgiving yourself as well. True. You know? that, that is true, for sure. Moving on in a way. Mm, mm. Not forgetting about it per se, I guess. Well, I guess you said she does say forget the past. Oh, never mind, but still... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, maybe maybe we shouldn't take it literally exactly. Yeah. Although, yeah. but 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 yeah, you're you're still right though. Uh, but yeah, like I I like that message that at least came up at those two instances in this volume. Really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, well then, let's talk about Stark next. Sure. He got some wise words from Master Eisen back in the day, which were. Well, we're basically, <laughs> I thought it was so funny, actually. He basically, Eisen basically told him, kind of, you'll win if you don't lose. <laughs> that, that was basically at the core of it, kind of what it was. Well, or I guess more more precisely, kind of was like, as long as you can keep on fighting, you haven't lost. Yeah. But like, <laughs> yeah. but you, you win if you don't die. Yeah, yes. You can't win if you don't die. If you die. remain, you, you remain conscious, you'll be okay. Mm. Uh, you'll, you'll win. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, words of wisdom. <laughs> yeah, but I did like it. You know, I'm still standing. Like, oh, that mm-hmm. that line, another one of those chills lines. Like, yeah, yeah, let's right. Go. <laughs> um, it it also reminded. I think I mentioned in a, a different podcast of ours, uh, the meme of, uh, is it? I didn't hear no bell like that. Oh yeah, this is actually even <laughs> even closer to that because he he was getting wrecked <laughs> for whatever reason. I, right. I really don't know why he was getting wrecked. Because eventually he's like, "Oh yeah, you're not that strong." <laughs> like, well, I, th- I think it's because of his fear. I think be- he he uh, he over. I think one of his flaws is that he tends to overestimate his opponents, 
That's and, true. And that makes makes him fear them, and that might make him less inclined to, well, to 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 battle offensively against them. Mm. Is my thinking. That makes sense. But uh, but yeah, we learned about, well, a bit about his past, and he he has a big brother named Stolz. At least that's how it's pronounced in German. It means proud. But it's also kind of similar to Stark. Stark Stoltz, like it's, it begins the same. So I guess it it works. Because obviously every sibling in the world have similar names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's got to be the same. <laughs> yes, it has to be. No, but, there um... has to be a theme. Actually, my, my sister's name is Jessica. Uh, ah. uh, my brother's name is Tate. So that, you know, it kind of <gasps> gets ruined there. Oh, no, Tate. You ruined <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, you know, Jesse, James, like that's kind of a, Ooh. a theme. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Your brother, name should, his name should have been Meowth. That I know. Been, been we tried, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Stoltz, he was a really good guy, it, it appeared. Right. Um, apparently the only one that really genuinely cared for, for, for Stark. Yeah. Sad, but at least he did have someone. You know, mm. when he was training and he he kicks up the mud or the... He hits up the mud accidentally on the cloak. I was scared, like for you know, for that page ah, turn because mm. I I was worried that he'd kind of be, you know, one of those stuck up older brother type of thing. Yeah, yeah, because no. he, he he kind of put up that front for his father, like right. Uh, so uh-huh. it definitely seemed that way. Yeah, <laughs> but no, he he's totally wholesome and caring mm. for his younger brother. Yeah, you know, if only all families were this supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, we don't know what happened to him. I guess it could be implied that maybe he died. Yeah, that's uh, right. But, you know, with that, because Stark ran away uh, out, out of the requ- request from his older brother. Mm. Um, remind me of his name again. Uh, St- Stoltz. But, Stoltz. But, but S before T in German is becomes like a sh sound, so it's Stoltz. Oh, Stoltz. Okay. I mean, technically, uh, we said we should say Stark too, but I, oh, I just can't bother. <laughs> yeah. Well, then yeah. I probably won't bother with with no. Stoltz. No, I mean, then. we we speak English right now. So. Yeah, right now. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, so Stoltz asked him to go away and, and whatnot. Um, we see a couple panels, the monster that is attacking that village, mm. and I, I just wonder if. Stark will eventually face that ah. monster demon, maybe. I hope uh, so. Th- yeah. Th- I think th- it'd be really cool. Yeah. I don't know where his village is from. I, I doubt it's up in the north where they are right now, but maybe that mm. monster is has moved up, uh, up there at, right. at some point. And it has an axe. So I think that'd be kind of a cool if it was another axe versus axe fighter. Totally. And like for real this time. Because while he, yeah. like his fight with Linia was cool... It, I think it, it was could, cool. I it could it. be cooler with like someone who's actually trained his whole life right. with an axe, you know, because that would be different. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Mm-hmm. But yeah, his father is a an ass hat. Absolutely. Uh, I guess I will for now. I will happily assume that he died in the attack. <laughs> <laughs> Watch, he lives, but the but, but brother uh, is dead. Yeah, that would be that would be awful. You know, I I could really go for a hamburger steak right now. Yes, yeah. Especially, especially that one. I, have you have you have you had a Japanese hamburger steak by chance? Um, when in your trips to Japan, I don't think. Yeah, no, not 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 exactly a hamburger steak. No. What do you mean by not exactly? Or well, I mean I've had meat that's been kind of like, like steaky, but not like a hamburger I guess. <laughs> I'm using uh, in- English words right now. I yeah, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, okay, well, next time you go to Japan, this is one of those like dishes that not a whole lot of people know about. Uh-huh. I, I recommend getting one, but obviously you go to one of those family restaurants, those family chain restaurants, and they'll have them, and they're not bad. But you need to go, you need to find a place that's kind of a um, not not necessarily a chain. But just one that specializes in those, and I highly, mm, gosh, the, you can get some really nice juicy hamburger steak, and oh, mm. oh it's so good. I'm just thinking about the one I had. Ooh. I believe it was in Ikebukuro. Oh yeah. Um, 
Oh my gosh, it was it was so good. <laughs> but yeah, but you you can you find some pretty good ones and um, and uh, that size of one that uh, Eisen and and <laughs> uh, Fiden cooked up, like oh it. Definitely got my mouth watering. <laughs> I I see. I've had uh, yakiniku in Ikebukuro. I guess that's the closest. Oh yeah, yakiniku is to great too. I, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I guess in America we call it Korean barbecue. It, it did originate in Korea, but Japan perfected it. Mm, I see. <laughs> <laughs> All the Korean stands are gonna be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we don't have too many of those listeners. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> or, well, no. I mean, hey, hey, I'll take any listener I can get. <laughs> Um, please <laughs> um but no like that, that that was great and like and yeah and also seeing his birthday uh turning 18 here so now we've seen mm-hmm. i think was it a fern's uh 16th birthday was in volume one yeah and now we got to see his um uh, stark's 18th birthday and uh and uh, yeah also the 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 region that they were in during that chapter was called appetite region which well it's a pretty easy translation it means appetite in in German, uh, which is fun, you know, makes sense with yeah. what what happens in the chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyone who works hard is a warrior. I like that. Uh, you know, we yeah. all we, we we all deserve to have one of those steaks. We all deserve that <laughs> hamburger steak. Yes, <laughs> amen, brother. And I actually, so there was some, actually the very end of that chapter really got me um, when they. St- you know, they got home or they got to the inn, I guess, where Freerin had prepared those uh, hamburger steaks and they started eating them. And on the last page, I don't think on, on any of the panels on the last page of that chapter, we don't see Stark's eyes. Even when he's talking, the the panels doesn't show his eyes. Like when there's one panel where you only see him from the back, even though he's speaking. And then the very last panel, I think you, his, his, his hair it covers up his eyes. I think that's because he's crying because ah. uh, he's remembering his times with his brother and kind of realizing how precious those times were in that moment, I, I, I think. Um, so at least since I was under that assumption, uh, I, I got pretty, I got pretty, I got pretty moved by, by that ending, yeah. ending of that chapter. And cause he, he, he's trying not to show that he's crying and like, I don't know, stuff like that always gets me. Like, <laughs> even, even, or maybe not necessarily crying. Maybe he's just like really, really sad and like on the, on the verge kind of of tears. I don't know. But like sure. e- even still, like those sorts of scenes in in like movies and and well in stories in general, uh, when someone is clearly or or not super clear necessarily, but well, I, when I can suspect that they're really really sad, but they they try their best to kind of just bottle out that all up, it's always stuff that I I yeah it it speaks to me I guess and it it moves me deeply. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. I mean, I I don't think I necessarily felt really teary-eyed or anything like that but I, I i did like that moment a lot and mm. I, I appreciate those um kind of touching moments for certain characters you know totally um, and i think it's just so wholesome that um i mean a, a good party would probably care anyway but you know this party in particular like if he didn't knew about his birthday and fern wanted to do something for his birthday and, yeah you know just i just love having people care about each other that's awesome Absolutely. By the way, did we actually see? I don't think we saw Fern give uh, Stark a gift. Like uh, he got a bracelet, which is odd because he points at one. and He's like, "How about this?" It... And he's like, "Nope, too expensive." Oh, but if you look, oh. if you look at, on his wrist, like he's he has a bracelet on. Oh, that he didn't have before. I I don't think he had that before. I see. I see. I I, I didn't really pay attention to that, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's a good catch. Uh. Yeah, cause, 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 to me, I, I just saw like, well, he pointed at the ring, and she was like, "No, that's too expensive. You can't have that." Uh, and then I, I didn't really notice anything after that. But I, I guess that, that, that's good to know that I guess he, he got a bracelet. Yeah. And I, well, and I, I will say the, the part in this book that got the biggest laugh out of me was um, when Fern, Fern was looking for Stark, and she, she was thinking, kind of, Master Stark wouldn't want such a. Per, uh, like such a perverted <laughs> po- potion and then the next panel he start looking at the clouds he's like those clouds look like boobs <laughs> <laughs> like, can you blame him what a perv can you, can you blame him <laughs> no i can't like but it was just so funny and <laughs> it, was, it was hilarious so perfect time dumb uh i i definitely laughed out loud at that <laughs> same same <laughs> Uh, and 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 also adding on to that, he was like, "I need to tell Fern about this later." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
like, I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> and he looks at her and he starts like starts the sentence and then stops himself because he sees her face. <laughs> I actually I love their character dynamic and like the chemistry between these two characters has like it's so good at this point. I love it so much. It, it is really good, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Another funny part from Stark is was towards the beginning where um he's just his fear of the the gardener from that place <laughs> with, the, with the axe like he's yeah. just petrified and right they have to like levitate him around <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh another I sorry this is so many another one mm-hmm. where uh he he's being nice you know he's like hey You've been carrying her for a while. How about I carry her? Yeah. You perv. Like, what? (laughs) How? (laughs) uh, Yeah, he didn't deserve that. (laughs) No. Yeah. I also loved how in this book, even in his dreams, he's still disappointed about the small size of that (laughs) Jumbo Berry special (laughs) that he had in the previous book. (laughs) Well, you know, he must have been dreaming about it as a child, and it was so much bigger. Yeah. And then, you know, reality hits, and now it's his nightmare. <laughs> uh, poor guy. Uh, I think the last thing I have for him mm. is, you know, he, he sees uh, Croft. Is that how you say his name? Uh, well, Croft or Croft, yeah. Oh, oh really? Uh, really Croft? Like oh, okay. it's more, it's huh. more, it's more like that than that. Yeah, I, I would think yes. Okay, well, because yeah, I mean, in English we would say craft. Mm-hmm. I, so I thought that was, I thought that was incorrect. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's not exactly craft. It's more like ah, uh-huh. cra- like the a sound is more like a uh, more more than a, well, like craft craft. But I mean, cra- craft is perfectly fine. I think. Well, anyway, so yeah, I'll just I'll just do the because craft here is just like you know macaroni and cheese. <laughs> craft cheese. anyway oh um <laughs> it's a it's a it's a brand um, oh oh i see <laughs> anyway so when he sees craft for the first time and he's commenting on the body like <laughs> i don't know i it's hard to tell because they're kind of far away but you know the uh, uh fern and and feed are kind of like huddled together mm. and fern just like um master stark yeah. like she's like i, I guess she's like worried <laughs> About his sexual intentions, or whatever. I, 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 don't I, I know. guess that's the joke, yeah. Or she's worried. Well, well, about yeah, about his sexual orientation because maybe she's interested in him and does, and and wishes <laughs> that he would be straight so that she could get with him. That would be nice, maybe fun, perhaps. That'd be interesting, but I think that leads great into Fern. Like, you want to talk about her next, or? Uh, yes, let's talk about Fern next. You know, I wonder about her because she is just like no horny twenty four seven. Like I, I will get the bonk stick out all the time. <laughs> like any signs of simping or perversion, I, I will shut it down. Like <laughs> you're, yeah. Uh, there was, but it's uh, not even there. Like she's just especially she's just, in this book. Like she yeah. definitely gave up. In the previous book, she she looked through both both Freerens and Stark's clothes. In the previous book, I you know I I guess it's uh, do as I say, not as I do, kind of. A... <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and she's like I'm I'm holy of mine, so I you know yeah I don't have to worry about <laughs> being considered a pervert. But it's so funny because she's, she's yeah no more horny. You all disgust me. Like it, that's that's what I felt this whole fight. Yeah, and it was yeah. funny. Like not gonna lie, it was pretty oh, yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely this volume absolutely gave those vibes more so I think than before. <laughs> I guess we'll see if that's a I guess a consistent thing going forward. Right. I mean, that it could get a little tiresome if it is consistently like that. Um, could be, yeah, but yeah. I feel like they've mixed it up like mixed the comedy up. like there's some running gags but yeah um they they change it up enough mm. uh so i at least in these three volumes so we shall see mm-hmm. um something i didn't think about until now though is she's supposed to be something like a, a holy woman like a like a, a sister or something like that i mean she's not healing magic but she has strong faith in the goddess and she yeah. does seem to be very like <laughs> no 
lewd thoughts, please. Like, True. Yeah. That kind of thing. And right. she was raised by Hyder. Well, I mean, not the greatest example, but <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he gave off the air of a holy priest. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah. In in her in her mind, he was. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, that, that's an interesting thought. I hadn't really thought of it that way. I mean, I knew, uh, at least this book made it, definitely made it clear that she definitely had faith in the goddess and all that, but... Yeah. Right, yeah, definitely this book, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I, I didn't think that was really brought up in the previous ones. Yeah, right, yeah. So I wonder in terms of, I know, me bringing up shipping. In terms of <laughs> Fern and, and Stark, uh-huh. uh, which I am growing to like even more, yeah. more but yeah. I, I do wonder... If she has an interest in in that kind of stuff, yeah. Um, if she's trying to be this holy woman, because you know, sisters, nuns are not supposed to have any sort of sexual romantic relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. It. I wonder exactly kind of what level she is at on that, and I mean, and for sure, right. like right now, it really could go either way for the two of them, like. There yeah, isn't necessarily I mean, reason to feel like oh they totally they're totally into each other oh, like let's go. absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But 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 there have been instances where I feel like I feel like it it's at least I'm having fun shipping them in my head. Sure. Uh, you know? Sure. And, and and I also want to don't want to say that it, oh it's for sure that she's be a, being a sister or, right. or, or you know a holy woman exactly. It's just. I kind of got that vibe this volume, and so I was just wondering what mm. exactly that is that all about, or is it just merely understanding about her mindset slash comedy? <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, we'll understand more in the next book. Yeah. But in the previous discussions, I've been kind of keeping track of well, the time that the story takes place in, as well as Fern's age, kind of linking those together to keep things easy for me uh, or for mm-hmm. us. And the obviously time passed quite a lot in the first book, but in the in, in volume two, time barely passed at all. Like the, it was like 28 years after Himmel's death throughout all of volume two. However, yeah. we actually moved forward a little bit in this book. Yay! Uh, one year <laughs> uh, over the whole winter thing that they stayed with uh, with craft in the in the hut. And so we are now 28 or 29 years after the death of Himmel. Yeah. And thus Fern, at least, I don't know if she has turned 18 or not yet, but she should turn 18 this year. Um, so yeah, she and Stark really are the same age. wonder what Stark's going to give her for her birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Hopefully hopefully either he knows or um, Freerin will remind him. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure she will. <laughs> yeah. Some of the things that we learned about Fern, uh, she can control obviously how much mana she produces and so she follows, or like how she, her aura I guess you could say, mm. and she follows Frieden's mindset in keeping that hidden um, at all times. Um, so that's how she was able to deceive the, the demons that, or the, I guess the, the demon she fought. Yeah. But during that attack, she might have died. Like, or like, the the potential for her to die was pretty big because... True, yeah. Because the demon wanted to talk to her and was so arrogant about the whole thing, he purposely missed the vital part. Um, so in that surprise attack, he could have just killed her right there. Yeah. But because he didn't do that, you know, basically he gave Fern the ability to kick his butt. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank goodness for arrogance and <laughs> yes. hubris. Arrogant villains are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so easy to exploit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but it, it was definitely cool to see how that technique was passed on from Flame to Freerin and from Freerin to Fern. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And and also like one of the kind of Fern's specialities that we learned in the first book and was also kind of touched on in the previous one was how Fern is really good at concealing her mana from foes, like in like completely in order to detect it. Like not 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 the specific thing about reducing it and looking, I guess quote unquote weaker than you are but mm-hmm. the fact that she can like hide herself like right that that has been something that we've known about which is really cool but a second mm-hmm. like a, another thing that seems to be kind of like a speciality of hers that we learned in this book was kind of her, her swift the, the swiftness of her spell casting yeah which is supposedly better than free runs even so that's really awesome to to know that she has things that she can do better than free run as well that was a surprise to be honest i did not 
um, expect that, but you mm. know, both both her and uh, Stark continue to surprise me in, in various ways. Yeah, it's awesome. In that battle, there there was a line where uh, here, let me go to it. So I I didn't write it all down because I was like, oh, I don't want to write, I don't want to <laughs> write this. But uh, it's a good line. He says, "Little girl, I have devoted the greater part of my life to the pursuit of to the pursuit of magic," mm. and she says, "So have I." Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So good. Yes. And she proceeds to blast him. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, blast into oblivion eventually. Yes. But, yes. Yeah, that was so so cool. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, yeah, and I, something I thought was pretty funny was during their uh, last days, because they, they spent a couple of days in at, at that place after the after the battle, and uh, there was a little... As, as these uh, books do from time to time, these little kind of montages, like where there's no dialogue at all, just kind of visuals, which I, I love. Like I, I, I'm sure I mentioned this last time I probably did, or maybe the both of us did, just how, how, how nice those are. Uh, but I really, really like them. Like I can't stress that enough. It's so it's, they, they're always really well done and just kind of just kind of cozy and neat, absolutely, and and, and fun sometimes as well. Um, but anyway, during that part when they were still like yeah before they left, Graf Granat's town, they mm-hmm. uh, there was one panel where uh, Fern was eating a really big hamburger. Oh my gosh! Uh, you cut you you took notes on that too. Yeah. <laughs> It, like, oh my gosh, all, twinsies! <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it was yeah, just like a really funny and cute kind of mix yeah. of that. Plus, eating a, eating a bogle. Yeah, Got that bogle. <laughs> Plus, it made me think like, hey, you can't eat eat a big hamburger. It's not your birthday. Uh, <laughs> uh, at least on, on my reread, I thought that. <laughs> yeah, this is before she knew. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no hamburger steak and a hamburger b- oh. sandwich. <laughs> different things fair okay you're fair that's fair (laughs) (laughs) i mean look Uh, i mean the good hamburger steaks i've had are just incredibly juicy and and whatnot mm -hmm. and the good hamburgers i have are juicy as well so in in theory they should be the same thing but i i assume that they could be prepared differently anyway for sure (laughs) uh, by the way hamburger is a sandwich it's a subset it's a subset of a sandwich and so is a hot dog totally Um, yeah it's there thank you meat between bread that's the sandwich yeah 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 yeah. Basically how it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bogo, um, I'm so glad you you commented on that too. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't know how I was going to bring it up, uh, but you brought it up beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> Some other funny things from her, uh, when they're carrying uh, a sick Stark through the snowstorm, mm. he's, he says, smells nice. And she's like, can I leave him here? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's just like, so quick. Like, <laughs> Yeah, both both. What well, Freerin also thought she smelled nice. True, and uh, she, she's like sheesh, <laughs> sheesh. So it must be it must be true. Yeah. If they both say that she smelled nice, then yeah, she must. Don't, don't she you must say smell it. really don't nice. You... Fern smells nice. Avoid saying, "Oh man, I I I, I want to smell that." Or anyway. Um... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is supposedly eighteen. At least. <laughs> uh, well, we're not sure yet. We're not. We're not sure. Yeah, it's like Schrodinger's eighteen. Close. <laughs> uh, but she's so mean sometimes. Like, yeah. I mean, that, that's especially. I mean, yeah. She she really showed that mean side in in volume two. Like that's when you kind of started to see it come out. Yeah. But volume three, she's just, just let loose, like <laughs> vicious in so many instances, and. You know, I think normally I don't kind of the dryish humor or, or is it is it is it considered dry humor? I'm not sure, but I, kind I'd of say to a degree be, at least, probably, yeah. Yeah. You know, and just kind of being a little a little a little mean. Like sometimes I don't like those characters. Um it, it just depends. Mm-hmm. But in this instance, I don't know, it, it it does kind of make her endearing in a way. Yeah. Um I, I, but I guess I hope I hope she gives uh, people the benefit of the doubt <laughs> more more often than not. But Fair, yeah. I know I understand it's it's the jokes and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Yeah, let's talk about craft next. A warrior monk and another elf. Yay! So awesome. I I did not actually expect to meet another elf this early. Or yeah, I, I don't know. I, I not I just this didn't... early. I didn't mm. expect that. Yeah. 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 So it was great to see. And his name means uh like power or force in german 
<laughs> Sa- same in uh, in Swedish, actually, as well. Oh, really? Mm. Well, that makes sense because you know Germanic. But um, mm-hmm. it's so funny because I-, I mentioned that it's a it's a company here, and oh yeah, everyone talks craft uh, macaroni and cheese, so it's really just power macaroni and cheese. Oh, <laughs> power, mother! I must eat craft to gain power. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's great. Love it. Uh, all the nutrients of macaroni and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I, for the record, I actually don't really like Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, not my favorite. <laughs> Fair. Uh, but I really like this guy. He he brings up the point about, well, the long lives of elves, that they basically live many lifetimes. Or at least that, that's how I kind of interpreted his question about what Freerin had done before she was on, like, in Himmel's party. And like he he understands like he understands that that was just a very short part of Freerin's whole life, and right. so he understands that she has you know well in in a sense led multiple lives in a, in a way throughout her very long mm-hmm. lifetime, and I thought that was interesting to for for another character to well to kind of bring that up so naturally well because obviously he has this well comes from the same right perspective can sympathize. Yeah. Or empathize, whatever. Yeah, yeah, dude, I always get those two words mixed up as well. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and he also brings up the concept of wanting to have someone um, to praise you. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it, it's interesting because the way he, he sees it, it's it's almost as if you have fulfillment of life if someone acknowledges you um, or, like, remembers remembers you. But, you know, it's 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 a little different than just you know, wanting to do something that people remember. Uh, it's hard to put my finger on it, but it, it it's so unique to their situation because they live just so long and people who would remember them are, have long passed, mm. you know? Um, so it's, it's uh, an interesting concept and he turns to the goddess in kind of a hopes that, or, you know, kind of places his hopes in, being seen, being acknowledged um, by a person who is eternal, um, supposedly. Someone right. that would live longer than him. Yeah. But it was also implied that a lot of elves kind of share that mindset. Like that pre- presumably yeah, yes. Freerun mm-hmm. 2 uh, mm-hmm. has that kind of, well, that kind of wish. That wish to be remembered. And that wasn't, I, I didn't think that had really been all that clear before. Uh, mm. In the story, like they erected the statues of the well, other, yeah. like of Himmel at least, and like, and she didn't really seem to necessarily want a statue of herself. Um, I mean, there was there was a statue of the whole party, of course, but I guess there's more that we don't just don't know about her. Maybe she kind of views herself um, differently than other elves, and maybe the praise that she's been given, you know, even during that ten year period, a very short period of her lifetime. Mm. Um, is enough? I, oh. I, don't, I don't know. That is true. Does it feel like she would acknowledge that at this point? Maybe? Maybe? Mm. I'm not sure. Maybe. Right. Because, yeah, and I'm sure we talked about, well, we speculated about the elves last time when we talked about Volume 2. Mm-hmm. And so, but but it's obviously it's hard because we haven't met many elves and still we haven't met that many elves. So it's hard to know just kind of how their society functioned and how how it worked and how right how close it was to human society like mm-hmm. we don't really know anything about that but if potentially if the elven society was more secluded kind of try to stay away from other cultures then yeah i think it would mean that freerin definitely has changed cuz she spent well she has spent time with humans probably more than other elves have if i'm right in 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 my speculation about them potentially being more secluded yeah but yeah i really don't know (laughs) no i yeah it's it's hard to say and i i think we're i think we're bringing up good points and and probably hitting the nail on the head but for some reason i feel like there's something that i'm not quite grasping with Mm. this concept that craft brings up about receiving the praise and and maybe it just just does boil down to being remembered um and that's fair but 
again, you brought up the point with that all elves seek that. So I just wonder, like, why exactly that is. That was what it seemed like to me, because I think, what was it? Well, it, it it seemed like... Oh, Free Ray mentions it, yeah. Yeah, right, right. So it seemed like it was something that was just kind of kind of a well-known fact, at least with mm-hmm. be- between elves, that, that that's something that they all kind of strive for or that they all desire. Mm. But, yeah, like, they, they definitely have similarities. Like, they have, obviously, the same perspective on time, yeah, uh, this long life behind them, and and this this wish to be remembered. They have all that in common. But he was still very different from Freerun in, in a lot of ways, which was <laughs> yeah. a lot of fun to see this character uh-huh. <laughs> in that way. His introduction was really funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, Freerun Fri- yeah. just like, yeah, whatever. Like, hey, how's it going? We're going to chill here for tonight. Yeah. Freerun's like, uh-uh. Nope. Not going to happen. <laughs> Did you not see what I just saw? Like, mm-mm. No. Yeah, a bit too quick to judge there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like, you know, let let the man do his squats. Yeah, Why right. he needs to do his shirtless, I'm not entirely sure. Like, <laughs> he doesn't want to get his, his shirt sweaty. Yeah, right, know? totally. Who uh, wants sweaty armpits? Like, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> no. Wipe, wipe those armpits. Uh <laughs> But but yeah, I I don't know. I, I was honestly kind of impressed by his character because even though he was only in it for one chapter, I I really started to like him, and I I definitely hope to see him again soon. I hope it doesn't pass like a couple hundred years or whatever they said um, before he and Freeman meet again. Like I would definitely like to see him again uh, in the manga, like within you know the relevant part of the story. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be great to see him come up. Yeah. It, yeah, like, it makes you wonder if it does happen, like, you know, a couple hundred years, like, is is this manga story going to go that far? And if so, then obviously, you know, party members are not going to be alive anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, hmm. At this point, I feel like, I feel like the story is going to, is is not going to go that far because I feel like I hope not. I feel like Fern and Stark at least have been so established at this point that they couldn't just leave them, right? Or yeah, <laughs> I maybe. mean, I mean, it really depends, of course. But yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Suppose we'll see. Anything else on Craft? No. Then I just have a little thing, not on him, but about the region where they met him because I I just put that under here. Uh, so I didn't know where else to put it down, and it's about another one of those German words, which I like to take note of because I think it's fun to to share a little bit of that. Uh, the region is called Decke, which, and this one's actually a little more funny than the others because it has two meanings in German. Uh, one of the meanings is ceiling, which okay. which is I guess you could view it as they're in like a northern region, which is kind of high up, as a ceiling is high up mm-hmm. in a room. Maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but that's kind of how I no, try maybe. to view it. However, the the other meaning for Decke, which actually was the only thing I knew before I before I Google translated this word to just to double check myself, um, it also means like blanket or covers. Um, oh. Which obviously there were there were blankets in this uh, in in that chapter, and and I I you know it's it's an item that anyone would find useful in that area i'm sure yeah well at least at least in winter time <laughs> a blanket of snow like that's a phrase oh oh really yeah in english i didn't know that oh mm-hmm. so i guess i guess it could be viewed that way as well then anyway let's talk about sign next and well when we when, when we were on the german words sign was actually a bit of a weird well, i didn't expect this to be a name it just means be like to be uh, oh. in German like it's just like yeah interesting the word for for that but we learned that he was raised by his supposed supposedly much older brother although present day they don't look like that different right? in age but um <laughs> and he wanted to become an adventurer ever since he was a kid but he gave up on that dream um but it still seems it definitely seems like he still he regrets not going on that adventure mm-hmm. with that with that old friend of his Honestly, I I think he's the the new party member, right? Cause Seems like, like it, yeah. You know, Frieden is trying her best. Well, maybe that 
wrong phrase. She's adamant about him joining the party at this point. So mm. I feel like it's going to happen. Um, yeah. But he's a very powerful priest, uh, a healer. So it would be, a, a, I assume, a great advantage to them. Mm-hmm. And I, I think there's a lot he can learn from their little group, and probably I'm sure there's some stuff that he'll teach. They'll, yeah, he'll teach them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see what his uh, mindset is and why he's so, I guess, against uh, going with them and, and living in the present versus dwelling on the past. Right. Yeah. It, it'll be fun. I, I I hope to maybe as we see them trying to recruit him in the next book to maybe learn more about Freeren's thoughts about that when she was in that situation, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I, yeah, right now she says that she hates him. <laughs> I assume that's not going to be the case forever. No. So uh, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see. Maybe, maybe because she sees her past self in him and she kind of just hates that part of her life. You know, it's like, Oh, why would, you know, why was I like that? Cringe, kind of, kind of a thing. <laughs> right. Uh, so she sees him and sees that. And she's like, ah, no, don't be cringe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like uh, Ison's words of wisdom, or like, like, like it's kind of that 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 level of wisdom. Don't be cringe. Yeah. <laughs> don't be. Cr- <laughs> I'm oh. still standing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I yeah like. Besides being a healer and like a priest, I think there's other similarities between him and Heiter. Uh, like he, I, I, I got by, like to me, he seems like a young Heiter besides just the, the priest thing. Cause he also had, well, one of the first things he said was like something like adults are dirty, right? All, all adults are dirty or something like that. And he didn't, he wasn't talking about literally dirty. He was talking about dirty minded and various things like that. I think at that yeah. point in time, um, like that was a little hint and, and well, he he was playing poker and stuff like that. It didn't feel like it's not maybe not as bad as, as Heiter, or well, I mean, I guess we don't know him as, don't know. as well yet. We can't really pass judgment. But he's not very good at gambling. He's not he's not your average priest. So yeah, I I, I do enjoy those little similarities with with Heiter. Yeah, and actually that that was something I started like w- when he was introduced and when the idea w- came up that he might join the party. I started thinking like, the party that's. Well, that Freer is assembling is kind of like a new version of her old party. Like, if, well, maybe in the making, with Fern kind of being the new Freerin, uh, Stark being the new Isen, Sign mm-hmm. being the new Heiter, sort of. Um, yeah, I thought about that, but you know, I was just like, well, who's going to replace Himmel? And I, yeah, but you bring that up, but I guess maybe. Frieden becomes the Himmel because Himmel was the person that mm-hmm. brought them all together. True. And so Frieden is now the one doing that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like Maybe. that idea. I hadn't thought of that. I, I like that though. Hmm. I didn't think about that until just now. So thank you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> dude. I, the, I, I, I love when you get new ideas by just may, maybe hearing the other person say something and then you get something like just a spontaneous idea like that. I, I love it yeah, when, yeah. when that happens on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. I guess we'll see. But that that is a really nice idea. By the way, the place where we first saw Sign, uh, that forest was called Alt Woods. Alt just means old in German, so it's just the old woods. Ah. <laughs> Very creative. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else on Sign? No. All right, then let's talk about Aura the Guillotine. Well, I guess we know why she's called the gu- the guillotine. Yeah, an army of beheaded soldiers. Wow. Right. <laughs> that was that was uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, and also, I-, I was happy that the scales actually served a purpose. Like there was actually right? a thing with them. Oh, so glad. <laughs> and it was really cool. I really liked that. Like the scales of obedience. Like it was such a cool, like magical weapon. And it played so well to her arrogance. You know, thinking oh, there's yeah. no way anybody could be as strong as me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and really, on so many levels, it was really, really good. I googled, or Google translated, Auserlese, which was the na- the name of the spell uh, that the, the the obedience spell was called. So I, I googled that okay. to see if it was because it's, it it looked like a German word to me, but I didn't know it off the top of my head. According to Google Translate, I can't 
I guess with this one, I can't say as surely as I could with the others. Although maybe I was wrong about something above, but I don't think I was. Anyway, with this one, I'm not saying it with as much certainty, but Ausserlese supposedly means choice in German. Ah. And I, I don't know, I... I don't know exactly how that would be related to the spell. Or, well, I, well, I guess the free choice being taken over by another person. Um, yeah. I guess that's yeah. just it. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Anytime I see a spell or a name of a person or a name of a place that seems German, I, I try to think, <laughs> think back of what, what does that mean? Or, and if I can't remember it, I'll, I'll uh, Google it. <laughs> I think it's fun. Um, yeah, I'm glad to let you do the work. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll gladly do it. <laughs> No, but it's interesting to hear that. Her death was pretty gruesome, I thought. Yeah, uh, brutal. Oh, but, my gosh. But it was good, though. Like, I liked it, but it was definitely, yeah, brutal, as you said. Well, it was fitting also just because of oh, yeah. what her name is, you know, mm. the guillotine and beheading herself. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Also, something I didn't realize last time, well, I couldn't really have, or and I don't know if it was intentional, but something I can read her name as now. Well, Aura just means Aura, like, or Aura. Uh, but, uh-huh. uh, like... Well, the, the the aura of the mana, like, which was a pretty central thing in that part of the story, ah. at least from this volume on, like, it would have been just a nod to that, uh, potentially. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, she, even with her specifically, it's relevant cause, because of how she kills her opponents, or, or at least how she takes control over them, is because of the aura, their auras, or, well, the aura of their uh, mana, kind of. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Let's talk about Linia a little bit. And I've just kind of noticed how freaking cute she is. <laughs> I love I love her design. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's a cute design. She's super cute. <laughs> so I was kind of <laughs> sad to see her get sliced in half. <laughs> but uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, not not long lived, but she has that that ability to basically copy um anybody's technique like fighting style is, mm. is pretty it's pretty cool yeah um didn't have like the all the power to go with it but you know i'm sure it was very useful for her totally. however um yeah the, we don't really we're not ever gonna really get to see that again <laughs> yeah well, unless somebody else knows the same spell i guess but yeah it has that same ability or what mm. not, yeah but but yeah, that was really cool. And that imitation spell was called Erfassen, which, and, and this was was this was also one I had to look up. So I I guess blame Google Translate if this is wrong. But I mean, it, I think it makes sense for it to, to mean this. It means like capture or record, uh, from my understanding. So well, yeah, she she yeah, uses a, a recorded move from somebody else, kind of. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's kind of kind of neat. Let's talk about. Graft Granite next, then. Oh, a bit. Uh, I only have one thing on him, and it's that he found his dead son's body, and mm-hmm. I don't know. Stuff like that always gets me. Like, even if, it, if like it's really brief, like, but I don't know. I I still really liked it a lot. Same. Really, really, really good moments. It was impactful, and it it wasn't just one moment, you know, where he's basically thanking Fiden, but also True. later on they lay down the earthy put the swords in the ground and mm. kind of have a funeral for all of them and yeah. yeah even his son so that was that was really touching yeah totally yeah definitely any other characters you want to talk about yeah uh we kind of touched on it a little bit but uh L- lugner lugner however oh yeah lugner yeah lugner um what a cocky arrogant demon like <laughs> yeah, you yeah know, totally i guess aura was like that too but Thank goodness he was so proud that he failed to kill Fur. You talk too much, man. Um, <laughs> stupid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that I thought that was lucky in a, in a way. Or, yeah, I I suppose yeah yeah. <laughs> but but I liked it. Like it's fine. It's just for sure. Yeah, I mean he he was like that. Like he he thought he was hot stuff, but he wasn't hot enough. Nope. Himmel, he never pulls the hero sword, but decided to be the hero anyway. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, I, li- I like that idea, and, you know, he-, he became. He became the hero. Yeah. He, yeah, he-, he-, he proved himself to be a real hero anyway, with, like, on his own. I love, yeah, I love that as well. He didn't need, like, a mythical sword to, to be a real hero. Right. And if anything, that just makes, him even, like, makes it all even cooler. 
Absolutely. It's like, you know, King Arthur uh, never having pulled the sword, but he becomes this great king anyway. Right, yeah. Like, yeah, that, yeah. Actually, it reminded me of The Wind Waker, uh, the, the Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. Oh. Where, and just real, real quick, I'm not going to go too in-depth here. but Because in, in a lot of the Zelda games, not all of them, of course, but in a lot of the Zelda games, especially the 3D Zelda games, but also a lot of the 2D ones, um, the the well the link you play as because you you usually play as different links well the the character is called Link and so it's different it, like versions of Link in most of the games and in most of the games this Link is like chosen by some prophecy or chosen by the gods like kind of from their birth kind of a lot of the time but Link in Wind Waker was not chosen by any gods or anything he just set out on his journey to save his little sister. And on the way, he proved himself to be a real hero. Oh, interesting. And to me, that, that, that always set him apart from the other links in the other Zelda games. And a, a reason why I always liked him so much. So yeah, I, it kind of made me think of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought of it that way. That's, that's mm. interesting. And mm, definitely mm. Compar- comparable to Himmel, who, you know... I mean, I guess he wasn't really saving his sister. He had always had in his mind, I'm going to be the hero. Fair, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But he didn't let, you know, the fact that he wasn't divinely called change that dream for him, you know? He oh, yeah. He went and seized his own destiny, if you will. Hell, yeah. Which is incredible. It's awesome. Mm. Moving on to Hyder, uh Did we know he was an orphan? Was that something that... Uh, no, I don't think we. I don't before? think we knew that before. At least I don't remember yeah. that since before. So yeah, that was. And I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we didn't know that he was childhood friends with him. Like, right. That was new information. Yes, it was, and actually, that also kind of because I think at least when we talked about the first book, we assumed that there was maybe a ten year gap or so between Himmel and Heiter. I think when we talked. Uh, but yeah. It, but it seems they're much closer in age, than that. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe not exactly the same age, but at, at least somewhat similar you know, right not not 10 years yeah right right which is funny because himmel treats him like he's much older yeah <laughs> like i don't know that that might be because i guess when they got to know each other that the age difference felt bigger because obviously when you're kids well when you're not that that old a couple of years feels like it like a lot of like yeah like a big thing oh uh, yeah but obviously as adults it's barely any difference at all but maybe since they've known each other since they were kids and he initially thought of him as a much older person he's just kind of kept that maybe that's fair <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it is funny how he he used to tease him about that kind of so Hyder mentions that having a child one day that becomes a mage and uh, that could be inferring of his taking care of fern obviously but i couldn't help but wonder Mm. um if maybe he was implying that he has a child somewhere i mean he is this corrupt (laughs) priest guy (laughs) you know (laughs) i wouldn't put it past him oh no absolutely (laughs) if maybe you know he wasn't really loyal to his vows Mm -hmm. uh so i don't know like you know maybe maybe there's a little hider roaming around somewhere. <laughs> and in our discussion just now, when we were talking about the comparison to um, Sign, I mm. I just, I don't know, like maybe, <laughs> maybe there's connection with Hyder. So, mm. so because the, his, the Sign's older brother also mentions knowing Father Hyder um, yeah. and talking to him personally. True. So True. that gives them a connection somehow. Not to say that the older brother would be the father, but, you know, maybe there's some sort of adoption thing going on. Um, don't know. Yeah. Not sure. Uh, yeah. It doesn't really, yeah, not, you know, that I think about it, it probably wouldn't make sense because, um, unless it would be like a grandchildren, because uh. Hyder, it, it's been what? How many, it, it's been 29 years since uh, Himmel's death. Um, and yeah. I don't think... He, Hyder would be very much roaming around meeting women. So I I don't think I don't think it holds much water. I mean, unless it's a grandchild, then maybe. But I don't I don't think I don't think the theory holds any water. I guess just throw it out there. Yeah, why good. not? Good, do do it. <laughs> see see what sticks. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's it. I have for specific characters. Cool, cool. Then moving into predictions. Well, as we've mentioned, Freerun is 
determined to make make sign join the party. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna guess he's gonna he's going to join the party in the next volume. I think so too. Mm. Seems like a safe bet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it took about half the volume, kind of similar to how the battle with Aura and the and the demons kind of took half the volume ish. Right. Um. So yeah, that I think that'd be a fair amount because I I assume he's gonna have some, um, obstacles or yeah, uh, you know, mental maybe mental obstacles that he needs to get some some over. baggage. Yep. Um. Free Ren will get her certificate eventually. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm sure they're going to this place called Ausurst. Well, it, it because there was a, there's a symbol that it looks very similar to a capital B, but it's actually like a double S kind of thing. Um, oh. I think it's called like Estset in German. It's a German huh. letter that looks like a. It looks like a swirly capital B kind of or I don't know how to describe it exactly but anyway I thought it was a B at first so I got confused as what to what word that was but then I then I realized it's it's an S set if I recall the name of it uh so it's Ausurst or Ausurst um was the place that they were going to uh and that means extremely in German extremely and yeah. but but uh they also like on their way there and like, yeah, because c- c- th- th- this place is beyond the the Schwer Mountains, so they need to uh, pass through there on their way. I think they're already passing, start like on their way to passing the Schwer Mountains. I think at this time, I think. But anyway, Schwer means difficult, so <laughs> I wonder if that's like, well, a-, a play to kind of imply that getting there is going to be extremely difficult. I like it. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> It is good, but yeah, yeah, she she she's gonna get her certificate eventually. Maybe not next volume, but definitely eventually. Or or maybe not. Maybe they'll find like maybe um maybe sign is a certified uh, first class mage. I don't know. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> I'd be surprised if he has a cer- certificate. Well, maybe he needs it if he's gonna heal it at all. Oh, I good, I, good point. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Just the thought that came to mind just now. Uh, but is it different, like, being a first-class mage versus being a first-class priest? True, and true. That could be, yeah, true, that could be different. But, yeah, I mean, it, it would be fun to see Freerin t- take that test, I think, uh, regardless. So I, I hope they do go there and do that. Maybe it's going to be just one of those one-panel montage things, you know? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> go take, get it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I could see that, too. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but I think Stark... I, I do I maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I think Stark will fight that demon, the axe demon or monster thing. Right. Um, eventually, I, I'm not saying the next volume. It, it could be something that happens just later on for mm. his own character growth and um, story. Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that happening later on. I hope so, actually. In. Mm. Mm-hmm. And Fern calls everybody a perv. Like. I, I <laughs> Predicting that now. A good prediction. I, I'll, uh, I'll join you on it. <laughs> uh, and well, I, another like kind of long term prediction, or one thing that I'll, I, I, I will want to see. And mm, well, maybe it's more like I want to see this more so than I, I predict we'll see this. But mm, I, I'll, I'll mention it anyway. Something I want to see eventually, not, 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 not already in the next volume, but at some point, is. I, I want them to pass by Flamis' grave on on that field of flowers. Oh. And, well, and, and just kind of... Well, because I expect it would have changed in the many years since then. Because it's been like hundreds of years. And I wonder, yeah. kind of, what does that place look like now? And how would Freerun react if she if she came there and, yeah, to visit her grave? Do we know where exactly that is? No, I, I don't think so. Or, mm. well, I mean, I get... Or, hmm... We don't know, although since you just asked it now, I, I just thought that, yeah, like maybe it is close by to kind of their hideout, like in that forest where they were already. Yeah. Um, in that case, maybe there is a smaller chance they'll visit, but it's not guaranteed that it's there, so it could be somewhere else. Gotcha. I just thought it, I, th- I, I think, I thought it could be nice, a nice moment for Freerun to, to revisit that place. Speaking of Flama, I think we will definitely get more um, backstory for her. Yeah, you know, as as the volumes go, and 
get to understand, you know, why she was the mage that she was, I think. Um, because it feels like Frieden has applied that there's more to her master than um, she has revealed, or at least the book has revealed so far. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I'm, I'm also ex expecting to see more just because this book started giving us more information on Flame more than I had expected right now, kind of. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So with that in mind, I also definitely feel like there there's definitely a good chance we'll get even more from her uh, in the future books. Yeah. Is that it for predictions, or...? Yeah, that's it for predictions. Just, you know, some funny mistakes. I oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> there, there was one part where, you know, you don't really always find the the artist mistakes. I mean, unless you're a fellow artist, maybe you would you would be more apt to, put, to figuring out. But there's one part where Frieden is, when Himmel finds Frieden and, and invites her to the party, she's kind of turned away and you see her side profile. They gave her a normal human ear versus an elf ear. Yeah. And I wonder, oh, maybe this is perspective, but I, I looked in other parts where you see her profile and uh -huh. no, they, it's different. Like it, you could clearly see the point of the ear. Yeah. So yeah, that, that was kind of messed up. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause when you, cause James uh, already uh, told me about this off, uh, like before we started recording, but uh, when you, when you told me about that and I, I went to look at it, of course, um, I also like try to see like, could it be, yeah, the angle or anything? Like that. But no, like it's it's a straight up human ear. Like it's perfectly rounded as any <laughs> like just normal human ear would be. <laughs> so yeah. A strange mistake, but I hadn't thought it, I hadn't noticed it on either of my two reads of this. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> good catch. Is that it for this week? I think so. Awesome. Then, if you enjoy our content, you can follow us on Twitter at Umami Manga, and it would be lovely if you'd like to support us by either rating our show on the podcast platforms or subscribing to our channel Umami Manga on YouTube. If you like this episode, please share it with anyone you think might enjoy it too. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time when we'll talk about Volume 4. Bye-bye. See you later. See you later, you pervs. Yes, you pervs.